very much. And the next question, and uh, that'll be uh, Marcus, the last question, round for the uh, journalists, and then, then we'll get to the audience. But Marcus, and we start with uh, Joe. Yes, I'm wondering uh, if you could all tell us, including Mr. Ford, what do you make of the Ford phenomenon, if I can call it that? Uh, he's been doing very well in the polls, the latest ones. Uh, he's the front runner. He seems to have tapped into a kind of uh, uh, anger in the city. Uh, some people find it scary. Some people find it inspiring. I'm wondering what you make of it and what, uh, and what kind of a mayor you think he would make. And you're going to ask all the other candidates? <laughs> okay, let's go, Joe. Well, uh, first of all, as somebody said, the only poll that counts is on election day. You know, six years ago when David Miller got elected and John Tory was second, uh, the person who was first this time in the count was Barbara Hall, the second person was John Luciano. So therefore, people are beginning to pay attention now. That phenomenon, if you call it, is interesting, but it's not the final outcome. I find it more interesting because all my colleagues to my left, but not politically, uh, basically are, are trying to all become be attracted to that magnet to my right, you know, and, and by so doing, clearing this center, 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 and the left for Joe Pantaloni, you know, if you want to vote for a progressive city builder who's not going to demolish the place like all of them want to do, then it makes it clear. So I'm pleased by that personally. And, and the fact that Mr. Ford is able to get the vote of his colleagues only 16% of the time is only going what indicates that you're going to have a team captain without a team if you were to get elected, she won't be. Okay, thank you, George. All right, so we're going to go to uh, Sarah, please. Uh, yes, I think uh, I tapped into the anger with myself when I decided to run. I was angry, and I think the people out there are angry, and I think Mr. Ford has, has tapped into that. But I think as they, they look deeper, what will happen is they'll see that Mr. Ford doesn't show up to council. He's, I've been to more committee meetings, more budget committee meetings than Mr. Ford has in the last year. I don't even work there. So I think people will see that, hold it here, you know, what, what is he saying? Yes, he's tapping into the anger. We're all angry. Um, and how can we turn that anger into something more productive and move our city forward? How can we expand the subway system? How can we do what we need to do and take back our city? Okay, thank you, George. I think that the, the phenomenon is fueled by a genuine frustration that Torontonians have that for as much as they've given, they haven't seen very much in return. And you could almost call that the Pantaloni phenomenon because this whole argument is just keep giving us more and eventually I guess something's going to get better. People have paid a lot more, but the services really don't seem to have followed. And I think that this gives rise to, in a time of some economic uncertainty, uh, gives rise to that uh, kind of opportunity. I think where we will in the next 45 days be uh, needing to focus our time is on fiscal reality. Because what no one's yet held Mr. Ford to account is with respect to his plan to take a billion dollars out of the revenue stream. Now I say for one year we can freeze taxes and you forgo some new revenue. His plan already on the books, including new spending, but he said a billion dollars in revenue that he plans to give back. And he's not told us beyond an anecdote about a party or this or that. He's not told us specifically what service implications come from his one billion dollar unfunded okay. commitment to reduce revenue. Yeah. The anger and frustration out in the city of Toronto is the true political legacy of the Miller years. That is the ultimate legacy and that's what everyone is wrestling with. Um, and there's no question that Mr. Ford has tapped into that. I'm not an angry person. I am frustrated at what's going on, but I believe and I'm an optimist and have always been an optimist. And I think at the end of the day, Torontonians are gonna want a plan to move from anger and frustration to action. There is no plan, there's a series of anecdotes uh, in Mr. Ford's. There is no record of consensus building, which is absolutely necessary in a system, and there are a series of character and judgment flaws that have been repeatedly in newspapers that as people focus are going to, are going to wonder if this is in fact who we want representing the city of Toronto. Thank you, Rocco. Now, let's get going. You, uh, Rob, you've got the final. I'm not taking rebuttals on this one, so be as angry as you want. <laughs> that's, that's fine. It, it just comes down to um, I know people are fed up with the gravy train and the wasteful spending down at City Hall. I've been down there for 10 years. Uh, 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see my colleagues are, are taking pages out of my playbook every day. My good friend Mr. Rossi now agrees that council should be reduced from 44 to 22 and in the beginning he said it can't be done. I'm glad to see Mr. Smither and Mr. Pantaloni once a... a I, I, I don't interrupt you. Okay, thank you. And I, uh, and I see that they want to uh, abolish the, the vehicle registration tax. When I first registered, I said I'm going to abolish the uh, vehicle registra registration tax. People are sick and tired of the wasteful spending, the, the $12,000 retirement parties that are going on. And Mr. Pantone, and Mr. Pantone and Mr. Smitherman were at that party. They condone that sort of behavior. Yeah. And, and people know that I'm going to go down to City Hall and I will put an end to the wasteful spending and, and the gravy train once and for all. The party will be over when I'm there. Okay, thank you very much, Rob.